Marin sent this bike over for review and I can't wait to show you what's inside. This is a Marin Pine Mountain. This is the 2020 Pine Mountain. The first good mountain bike I ever had was a Marin Pine Mountain. It was in 1996 and I love that thing. I rode it all over. And I'm stoked that Marin is still making the Pine Mountain and it's still a chromoly steel hardtail. Let's get this unwrapped so I can show you a couple cool things that's going on with this frame. Pretty cool. The tan walls are so hot right now. The real reason I haven't run tan sidewalls yet is not because I don't like them, but because I picked the tread that's right more than the appearance and the front tires and the back tires that I like. I can usually find one in tan wall, but not the other. So I just get the regular ones. I wish there were more tan wall options. These tires are interesting. The sidewall's not quite opaque enough and you can kind of see the cords through it. You know, back in the High school days when you left your bike outside and the sun rotted everything and you could start to see the cords. It looks like that a little bit. Kind of a bummer. It's not more opaque. Kind of cool with these unboxing videos. It helps you see it in real life, not just in the press photos. Ooh, I like it. Super retro-y with, I mean, not just the tires, but also like this color. It reminds me of like, Forest Ranger truck. They include a PDF for this frame that you can send to your custom frame bag builder and then they can line all of these up so you don't need any straps going around, which is pretty cool. You can just bolt the whole thing onto the inside of the triangle and then you don't get straps rubbing the paint and it just provides a really cool look. That's pretty cool that they thought about that. And all the cables are routed on the down tube. I really like that. I think that's fun. This is the Pine Mountain 2. There is a huge difference between the Pine Mountain 1 and the Pine Mountain 2. The frame is not the same. The Pine Mountain 1 uses a quick release rear axle, those really thin ones, and this uses a 12 millimeter rear axle. That makes a huge difference, and I recommend only getting hardtails with 12 mil rear, rear axles. I wish the Pine Mountain 1 had the 12 mil axle too, but so if you want a cheap bike, that's one way to make it cheap where A, most people won't notice, and B, most people won't care, and C, it kind of adds to a flexier ride so it'll beat you up less, but it also means when you're on it cranking really hard, it can slip. I've seen that on so many Trek Roscoe's, is buddies here standing up putting power down and it'll actually pull the rear wheel out of the dropout because the quick release isn't strong enough. But I always recommend 12 mil through axles in the rear. It also means when you upgrade one day to a really nice wheel set, all the really nice stuff, especially in boost, is going to be for a 12 mil axle. You can buy kits to neck it down to a quick release, but there's a reason most hardcore bikes are going to those 12 mil axles. Well, this brings back the memories seeing the tiny little seat stays, which I love. That allows them to flex a little more and they're gonna be less stiff and not beat me up as much. Theoretically, we'll see how it actually rides. That's one of the first things I look at is how do the seat stays look? Are they designed to give a little bit of flex or are they really big to be really stiff? Got some interesting stuff going on here. Oh, that's hollow, that's not boxed in. That's just kind of a C channel. It's cool how the dropout section is a C-channel instead of fully boxed in. I wonder if that's going to affect the ride characteristic and make it a little bit more supple. Not sure. Pretty cool. We've got a hollow chainstay yoke on this side. I don't know why, because the other side's not hollow. Usually, when we see that, it's to allow a little bit more vertical compliance, but I don't know why we would see it on one side but not the other. It's not going to be a trail ripper like the San Quentin or like most of the bikes we review on this channel. It's got a purpose and its main purpose is, you know, multiple days on here carrying your camping gear. You can affix racks to it here. We've got rack mounts here, which is cool. It's meant to be durable over light. And so bike packing, you're putting 20 pounds of sleeping bags gear on here. So if your cranks are 50 grams lighter, you're not gonna feel that. So there's no need to do that. So. They usually focus more on things on the frame, being able to put bags on, being able to put racks on. It's pretty cool all the different accessories they have for all these bosses. We've even got bosses under here, which you can't see in the pictures online. But yeah, there's a water bottle cage mount under here too that you could pop one under there as well. 
pretty cool that they've thought of all that stuff. So yeah, we're going to see heavier parts because durability is more important than lightweight. 9, 10, 11, 12. We got SLX 12 speed on this. Cool. That's the first time I've actually seen it in person. This is a demo bike. I have to send it back to Marin. I don't get to keep it no matter how much I like it. And uh, that's what happens to a lot of the review bikes that I ride. Is I use it for a month, ride it all over, film some videos, share my impressions, and then send it back to them. This has a threaded bottom bracket, which I love. The welds look really nice on this. I think they did a good job. Oh, cool. Check out this handlebar. That's very unique. Really interesting that they opted to go with such a short stem. That's got to be like a 30 mil, maybe 32. That is super short, which I think is cool. I like seeing bike packing bikes with a little slacker head angle, a little bit shorter stems. So when you do get on a trail and you're not loaded up or you are loaded up, it's a little more fun to ride. And I, I think that's really cool. One problem I've had bike packing is the cables get in the way of your bed roll up front. I've had that, it, it's just kind of interesting trying to figure out the best way to put it on here without totally smashing your cables. And by having this, this riser bar with the cross piece on it, you do have more options. You could run a little front bag there, but these cables have a little bit more room to move around and aren't going to be in the way as much as before. Kind of cool. And I like a tall stack. And so this raises the bars for a higher, more comfortable ride. And when you're in the saddle for eight hours a day, two inches higher makes a big difference. I like building bikes almost as much as I like riding them. Marin actually built this bike up, got everything dialed and then took it apart and sent it to me. So everything should be pretty dialed. I'm excited for that. Thank you, Marin. All right, let's see. We got 180 rotors. I like seeing that. These don't look machined like a normal rotor. I'm gonna look into that. One cool thing, RockShox's new forks will fit up to a 29 by 3.0 on their 29 forks. They just clearance these out so you can fit a lot more in there. I think that's really cool. Brakes are one of those things that can easily get overwhelmed on a bike packing trip. It'd be easy to, to totally cook your brakes and need to get new pads halfway through especially since you're doing long distances, you could have like a five mile descent on a gravel road that's sketchy and steep and you're just dragging brakes the whole time with all your bags and they can overheat. And so good brakes are important. Okay, we're almost done. I just need some pedals. I need to fine tune all the controls and I can ride it. But I wanna talk about some really cool things that I've noticed about this bike that I like. First of all, looking at the geometry, this has a 66 degree head angle. That is slack in the bike packing world. Good for them. I also like that it's got a bigger fork, but it's not like 160 mil travel because that's more than you would need on a bike like this. I like the riser bar. I like that it's got two piston brakes in the front instead of single piston. I like all these bosses. I think it's cool. It adds weight. Who cares? This is not the bike you buy if you're a weight weenie. They routed the dropper housing routing out the side of the seat tube. Most bikes route it under here and that gets in the way of your frame bag. This allows you to run a true full triangle frame bag without the dropper cable getting in the way. I'm curious about this little oval they've cut out in the chainstay yoke. I'm wondering if it, there's not one on the other side. The other side's an actual tube like a normal steel frame but this one is down to that one single piece of metal. I wonder if they have similar flex qualities from left to right, and I need to test that out. I like the elevated seat stays. Because it's elevated, your heels, I don't think are gonna get anywhere near it. If they came down here, I could see your heels rubbing it here, but since they're elevated, we might be okay with that. I'm curious to look into that. I like that it comes with a 150 mil dropper. I think the Tanwall tires look cool. They're definitely cheaper tires and there are some things they needed to spec cheap to keep this under $2,000. I think the cable routing's tidy. I also like that it's on the underside of the down tube because when it's up here and you put a frame bag on, all of the cables and the frame bag are fighting for the same space and it's a bit of a pain. So this is completely out of the way. I like that we have water bottle bosses under here. We also have two up on the top tube. The welds look really good. I like the little gussets. 
It's cool. For their whole life, Marin has made the Pine Mountain their steel frame. I like the thin little seat stays. Let's see if that provides a forgiving, supple ride. I don't know. It's it, There's a lot of questions I have to answer about this. I like that it's got a 12-speed cassette. I feel like 12-speed, the gear range that you need is most needed on a bike packing bike even more than a trail bike because bike packing routes you're often on roads for a couple miles so you need the high gears and then you're also slogging up really steep stuff with a really heavy bike and you will definitely use the pie plate in the back so i think it makes a ton of sense to spec this with a 12 speed i'm interested to ride this rock shocks 35 fork excited to try that I think their custom bar is cool, at least on paper. We need to see what it rides like, see what it feels like. I think it's a pretty cool little bike for its intended purpose. And because of the geometry, it should still be fun just to ride on the trails. And you know, a lot of bike packing bikes are kind of boring on the trail because they're so specific to just putting down the miles and they kind of feel like a road bike. They're just not exciting. But on a bike like this, you could still have a fun time on the trail. I think they did some cool stuff and put some thought into that. There are some things that worry me, like these rotors. I need to look into them more. They're not machined. But other than that, nothing's nothing's really standing out to me. I, I think it's a cool bike. I like the color. I like the looks. Stay tuned as I put this bike through its paces. Learn what it's great at. Learn what it's not great at so you can decide if this bike is a good fit for your style and your needs or if you need something different. Post up the questions you've got below. I'm curious what you think about it. Thanks for watching. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.